Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Isn't it a beautiful day outside? Amen. Who would have thought we'd have such beautiful weather in October? Amen. God's smiling on us. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you'd stand with me, we want to, amen, pray for the blessings of the Lord in this place, the outpouring of his spirit. Amen. In this place today, amen. And God would move mightily, beautifully, amen, as only he can do today. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you offer up that praise with me right now? Would you go ahead and open your heart? Amen. And invite the Lord into this place today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you today. We magnify you today. We're so thankful for your goodness. So thankful for your mercy. So thankful for this day that you have made, God. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be in this place. That you would do your work. That you would do your purpose. That you would do your will in this service today as we yield ourselves, Lord, as instruments of righteousness unto you today, God. We pray in your precious name, in your precious name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. You alone are most high. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. We magnify you today, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship him in song today. Amen. God is great. Oh, he is great.
Jesus is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We worship your holy name, God. You are so worthy, Jesus. Yes, God. You are worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Water can turn. Awesome. 
worship you. Oh, let's lift up that name. Let's praise our God today. Oh, that God that is above all gods. The King that is above all kings. The Lord of lords. Oh, our, salva our salvation today. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, God. We praise you today. We magnify you, God. For you are so good. For you are so great, God. That there is no one beside you, Jesus. Oh, you are Lord that reigns on the throne forever. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you today. Oh, we magnify you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you today, God. Oh, we praise you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you. Oh, we glorify you, God. For you are worthy, Lord, of all of our praise. For you are worthy, Lord, of every single bit of praise that we can give, God. For, Lord, you made us, Lord. You gave us a chance. You gave us an opportunity, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, you, our Lord, are wonderful. You, our Lord, are so wonderful to us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God is so great. He is so strong and he is so mighty. Hallelujah. If you do need something today, I do I do try to say, call God for it. If you need a financial blessing today, call, ask God for it. If you need a healing today, you can come up, we can pray for you. You can be healed today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need direction, God can give you direction. If you just need a miracle, God can give you a miracle. Right now, as we go to prayer, I want you to take whatever need you have right now on your heart and on your mind to God right now. We are going to pray for revival to, to fall in Salem, Oregon. That is going to sweep this city to every, every edge that it can take to where it cannot contain it. It keeps flowing out to every city, into Oregon. It touches every city. It can touch every soul that it can reach. And that we're going to pray right now for Brother Kurt. He needs prayer right now for a touch. We're going to pray for God to touch him today. Hallelujah. And of those that need healing today, we're going to pray for healing in the name of Jesus it's going to happen. We're going to pray for our lost loved ones that they're going to come back to church. They're going to come back to God. And that they are going to be with us in this building today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we go to God right now. Jesus, we worship you. We magnify you, God, for you are our healer. You are our savior. You are our redeemer, God. And we know that you are the one true God that sits on the throne. Lord, you were dead, but three days later, Lord, you were raised up again. Thank you, Jesus, for the power. Thank you, Jesus, for the salvation today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, right now for your revival to fall, God, in Salem, Oregon. In the name of Jesus, Lord, your spirit will fall upon Lord, every, Lord, heart, God, that needs to be saved. On every soul, Lord, that needs to be saved. Every broken heart today. Oh, Lord, let it fall in this city today, Jesus. Let your spirit, Lord, pour out upon us today. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, to be witnesses for you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you today. We thank you, Lord, for the, for, for the revival that's going to fall today. And we, Lord, pray for Brother Kurt right now that you would touch him, Lord. Touch his body, Lord. Touch his mind today, God, that you would touch him. In the name of Jesus, that he would be touched. We ask you, Lord, for every healing, Lord, that needs to happen today. In the name of Jesus, they are healed. In the name of Jesus, their bodies are restored. In the name of Jesus, Lord, they are touched, God, and they are completely healed. We thank you for it today. We magnify you for it today.
today. And Lord, we pray for every lost loved one that we have here, that you are working with them, that you are touching them, God, that you are drawing them to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your promise, God. We praise you for it today. We magnify you, God, for what you are going to do. Oh, let's praise God right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Thank you, Lord, for our lost loved ones, God. Thank you, Lord, for the revival that's falling today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory today. Hallelujah. We praise you today. We glorify you. Give you all the praise, Lord, and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated today as Brother Chantry comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's just get right through this. Next Thursday at 7 o'clock is prayer. 7.30 is Bible study. Amen. Please come to that. And next Sunday at 2 o'clock is Sunday school. And 2.30 is family worship. And we have our own brother, Alfred Starr, is going to preach for us. Amen. Amen. And, <laughs> and since um, uh, the summer is over, we have no other announcements yet. Things are coming. Christmas is coming. I just went on a trip, two-week trip to Florida. So this whole Christmas thing now is just something else. When... Uh, and uh, my brother got up and said, if you need a financial blessing, he was, uh, he was talking to me personally. Because in, yeah, in terms of money, I wish I knew what that was. Anyway, amen. <laughs> Let's stand. Let's pray for our offering. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus God, bless the people that give. Bless them a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's march.
today. Jesus, the righteous. Jesus, the holy. Jesus, the true. Oh, I worship you, Lord King. Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. You are faithful and true. You are faithful and true. We worship you today, Jesus. We exalt your name today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. His presence is in this place. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Amen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. He wants to touch you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to love you today. Hallelujah. He wants to work in your life today. He wants to perform the miraculous in you today. Amen. Praise God. And we are so honored. To, amen. Not just to have the presence of God. Amen. But to have our evangelists with us today. Amen. May God bless. Amen. Our evangelist, Brother Plymouth, today as he comes. We love this man of God. We're so thankful for this man of God. We're so thankful for our evangelist today. May God bless him today. We love him. Can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. He's my friend. Very excited to be with you today. We just came out of a I don't even know how to explain what happened today. It was just off the chart. Wall to wall people. Just, uh, I, I had never seen that many people in that particular building. And uh, I doubt if it was a record crowd. I just wasn't there for the big one. But it was definitely the big. Well, I, I mean, just give you an example. Uh, Thursday night, ladies conference, people coming back, whatever. I think we had 25 people in the building. It's the lowest crowd I'd ever seen in Albany in my life, and I've been going there 20 years, and so today I walked in, and I mean, it was just like full, I mean, literally, it was, it, it was full, and so uh, get here today, and here you are, look at you, give yourselves a hand, y'all looking good today, amen, should have left that mouse alone, boy. Money's all it knows, and it never gives it back. He said, why didn't you give me that advice two weeks ago before I went? Uh, I don't know if y'all picked up on it, but there's been kind of a theme here today. God is worthy. God is awesome. God is powerful. God, I'm just... We, we know that here, they know it there, but listen to this, Revelations 5 and 9, Revelations 5 and 9, and for all of my friends from Albany, I apologize for the rerun, but at least it won't have Ukrainian interruptions. We, we had Ukrainian inter, inter, interpretation today, so it was interesting. Uh, <laughs> Revelations 5 and 9, and they sung... A new song. Saying. Hey, they didn't just say a new song. They, they, they gave you what. Thou art worthy to take the book. And to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. And hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Every tongue. Every people. Every nation. All Nation Sunday. Whew. I'm excited about being in the All Nation Sunday three times today. Now, I don't know 
how many foreigners we got here, but I know I'm a Texan. I'm, I'm a Texan American, and, 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 and I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you, he works in Texas, believe it or not. I want to preach to you for the next little while, redeemed by the blood. Redeemed. Man, I'm telling you right now, this probably won't be a rerun. This won't sound nothing like what I just preached up the hill. Uh, you, you may be seated. We're going to pray here in just a minute. But before we pray, uh, uh, Jace, stand up and give God a praise, son. A praise, a worship, a testimony, whatever. Be thankful. Awesome. How about that? And my newly minted convert, Marcus, stand up. Let him see you, son. Marcus got the Holy Ghost just this week, and he's pretty excited about it. And he drove up here to be with us. Say a word for the Lord, buddy. Redeemed. I wish I'd have been more disciplined to do this, but I've got a song, a video. Uh, what do they call that? A video song, song video. They have a word for it. Anyway, a friend of mine wrote a song, and his... Had a wreck, totaled his big rig truck that he pulled his trailer with. Uh, had just moved into a brand new home, been there a couple of months, burned to the ground. <laughs> Father-in-law had a heart attack, had to go have several bypasses done. I mean, they had just been wham, wham, whammed. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And he wrote a song. And I'm just going to give you the title of it. I think, I think you'll get, I wish I could play it for you. But, but here, you were never meant to stay broken. God had every intention of fixing you, healing you, redeeming you, saving you. Come on, restoring you. Oh, I think we ought to go ahead and stand one more time. Let's just give God. So he's about to do something awesome in this place. Woo! Yeah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My, 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 my. Stretch your hands toward this pulpit and just pray a blessing of energy and strength and anointing. God, let the power of the Holy Ghost stand up in us one more time. Let your word be powerful in my mouth, but doubly powerful in their ears. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. In our text today, the scripture declares that we have been redeemed to God. Yeah. 
to God. You, you belong to God. God never loses. God never loses. And you belong to Him. Now, we discovered in this text there's so many just this one verse there's like 13 things I want to talk about but but the thing that I want to point out to you first and foremost is is that there is divine order in heaven just like in the earth God is an orderly God and he set boundaries and rails and and one of them was that somebody has got to qualify to open that book And, 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 and the Bible said, and the man of God was weeping. And he said, what are you weeping about? He said, I'm weeping because there's nobody to open the book. And the angel of the Lord said to me, man of God, weep no more. There is one worthy. <laughs> hey, his name is Jesus. He's going to open the seals. And the reason he's qualified is because he was slain. The scripture declares before the foundation. Oh, man, I, I can already tell. I'm gonna be, I'm, this is going to be a whole lot longer than the last one. <laughs> Jesus didn't just come and die for grins. He came and died to redeem us by his blood. The divine order and purpose of the life of the man Christ Jesus all pointed to one point and that was his sacrifice on Calvary so he could have the authority to get to heaven and say there is some redeemed there's been some names written in this book and I'm the somebody help me now there's going to be a roll call up in heaven and Jesus is going to call my name On this All Nations Sunday, I wanted to point out to us that God works everywhere. Brother Johnson mentioned in his uh, pre-service remarks today that out of 250 nations, that like 248 of them not only have Pentecostals, but united Pentecostals there. But, but let me get to my point. He has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, and people and nation. Now watch. That is not just, uh, for lack of a better term, hyperbole. That's not hyperbole. It's an actual Amen. fact. Watch this. Watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And... They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I want you to shout this, everybody. everybody. In, the house, in the house, in the street, in the street. come on, in the, city. in the city. They got it. How do you know they got it? Well, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, my goodness. Now watch this. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. They're always first. Deal with it. Elvis is dead. Deal with it. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, are there some nations today that weren't nations then? Without a doubt. Are there some peoples today? No doubt about that. 
But on that moment, in that minute, there was somebody there from every nation under heaven. Now, verse 6 says, When this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak. Let that sink into your gray matter for just a minute. There was people there from every kindred, every people, every nation, every tongue. And 12 disciples came out. One of them stood up. The 11 joined him. Now, if you're, you want to know the significance of the 11 standing up with Peter, they were all going, whatever he says, that's it. He's got the word. He's the man for the hour. We agree with him. It's, uh, Peter is, is on the spot. He's, he's got to do his job. And, and so he gets up and he stands up and he preaches. And, and, and the scripture says they were all, verse 7, amazed and marveled. Okay, amazed means... But to marvel means, look, at, are you hearing this? Can, can, hey, hey. Now wait, no, you got you to get, wait, 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 wait. They were amazed about, say, one, two, behold. Everybody say, pay attention. All of those which speak are Galileans. How hear we every man? Oh, here we go. I, now, I'm not, I'm not trying to destroy anybody's theology. I'm not trying to rewrite the book. I'm just reading what I see. How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Here he comes. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea. Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, <laughs> in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews, and there was a few proselytes. There were some Cretes and some Arabians. And we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Not only are they speaking our native tongue, they're making sense. They're all saying the same stuff. God is good. God is great. God is powerful. Jesus is Savior. There's only 11 guys. One of them is doing the talking. And there's this old Christian dude standing there next to one of them Libyans. Hey, he's talking in my native tongue. No, he ain't. He's speaking in Libyan. I'm hearing him perfectly. Y'all are both wrong. He's speaking in Nigerian. Nah, -uh. he that's that that that's Hebrew. That, he's speaking perfect Hebrew. Let this sink in on your gray matter. From Peter's lips. Supernatural intervention happened and translation from ear to ear to I'm just trying to help somebody. And they all heard it like it was their native tongue. You talking about an all nation Sunday. You gotta get this. And so they were all amazed and doubt, saying one to another, what does this even mean? This ain't never happened before. This is new. This is and then, you know, there's always the haters. They were mocking. Ah, a bunch of drunks. 
As far as I know, there was only one drunk guy in church today, and I prayed him sober and prayed him through. And that's when Peter stood up. And the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose. See, and it's just the third hour of the day. They, didn't even, they ain't been out of bed long enough to be drunk. Now, he didn't say they wasn't drunk. <laughs> he said they just ain't drunk like you think they're drunk. It's okay to get drunk on the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching so good right now, y'all have no idea. Here's what he says in verse 16. I'm trying to hurry now. But this is that. Come on. I, if I had a picture of Jesus, I'd put his finger out and, and just caption it. I did that. <laughs> I got my comedic in today. <laughs> he said, pay attention. Listen to my voice. Fix to tell you something important. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall. Everybody say, it shall. Yeah. Everybody say, it hadn't happened yet. Yeah. When Joel wrote this down, it was a future event. But it's happening now. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. I will. Boy, that is a curveball with slobber all over it right there. I mean, slip sliding away. How do we reckon that? Hmm. In the last days. But, but, but he did it in 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. The last days, all 2,000 years of them. Oh, you're, I, you got the wrong preacher for that. I don't get intimidated. Ever. Everybody shout last days. Boy, the Holy Ghost just dropped a little nugget of truth in my brain. Last days, last days. Jerusalem now. I read this in the book somewhere. He is the same. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Behold, I am the Lord and change not. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall. You know, I've been walking around telling everybody I'm doing really good for an old fat guy. I'm going to have to quit using that old moniker because I don't dream yet. <laughs> I get, I, as soon as I have a dream, I'm going to start accepting that I finally got there. <laughs> on my servants, on my handmaidens, all you lady preachers, this is your verse. All you anti-lady preachers, shut your mouth. Let every man be a liar and God be true. He said he was going I will pour out in those days of my spirit. See, I am trying to be good and do the work of an evangelist. I was praying for an old man one time, and I mean that literally and figuratively. His name was Duke, Uncle Duke to be exact, and, and, and they couldn't get him to come to church because he's just an old, ornery old cuss, and so they said, would you come out to the house? I said, he, he, we, I baptized him in the creek, and he wants the Holy Ghost. I said, yeah, I'll come praying through for you. So I went, his, his, his nephew was in a wheelchair, Clark Roan, and so he took me to Uncle Duke's house. Well, 
Uh, he didn't tell me. He went ahead and just scheduled a church service. There's about 15, 20 people there at that house that night. And so I got through preaching, and <laughs> I got Uncle Duke to come down and, and look, trying to get the Holy Ghost. And, and Uncle D Duke had uh, false teeth. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know where we're going, don't you? And, uh, <laughs> and, and he evidently, uh, he didn't have any denture cream. And he was a big, tall fella. I had to stand up in my chair to pray for him. I'm not making this up. It's a true story. It actually happened in the real time. I'm standing up over him in that chair, and I lay my hand on him, and I said, Uncle Duke, throw your head back. Use your outdoor voice. God's going to feed with the Holy Ghost right now. And he threw his head back and started speaking in tongues. And about the third or fourth word, his teeth turned loose and fell down the back of his throat. I thought he was going to gag. He just spit them teeth out and kept talking. So, so there was a young man there, my whole story, that, that was just for your enjoyment. Here, here's the real story. There was a young guy there, he's sitting on the back row, and he raised his hand, he said, I, I, I'd like to have that Holy Ghost preacher. And I said, well, come up here. So he came up there, and I got to pray with him a little bit, and, and one of those rare moments, you know, I'm not shocked when they get it, I'm shocked when they don't. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of in the habit of it happening, you know, and it don't. I'm like, okay, well, what's going on here? So I stopped him. I said, son, now, normally you'd be talking in tongues by now. What's the problem here? What is, what's keeping you from getting the Holy Ghost? Listen to my words now. He said, my Holy Ghost just won't come. I said, therein lieth your dilemma, young man. You don't have a Holy Ghost. It's his spirit. He said, my Spirit, you don't get my Holy Ghost, you get you don't own it, you don't control it. I am preaching to somebody right now, you don't deserve it, you can't earn it, you can't buy it. It's a free gift of grace given by Almighty God. For by grace are you saved, and not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. So if you get people walking around talking about my anointing, my global anointing, it ain't, it ain't. Now you can have my calling, my, my sacrifice, my service, my commitment, my prayer life, but anything spiritual is his. And, and like pastor said if you start getting glory because of it he'll take it off of you do you know that David's greatest plea of all of his pleas Lord just do not take your Holy Spirit from me it must have been an option okay I'm going to say that again it must have been a possibility I don't know about you but I don't want God taking his spirit out of my life clap your hands and shout yes to the Lord Let me, let me, whoo, I got to do this again at 630. I, I got to get to my point, though. Y'all do want me to get to my point, don't you? I, I won't quit yet. I'll just give me five more Pentecostal minutes. There's one in every crowd, normally a new convert. Don't be acting like you're home. <laughs> but verse 39 of Acts chapter 2 brings it home to us everybody say us for the promise is unto you to your children where are the children you talk about night and day I bet there was 25 kids in that church service today and I think most of them was either squalling or crying or fussing all at the same time today at one point. I leaned over and told Nathan Johnson, I said, you know, today would have probably been a good day to have the nursery open. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to leave that laying right there. <laughs> Did I mean? <laughs> oh, I'm, I, ca I can't. I got to stop. I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm never going to finish my sermon if I go down that trail. 
For the promise is unto you, to your children. Even, folks, listen, if this doesn't give you pause, you need a Holy Ghost checkup. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, we've already made the observation that this is All Nations Sunday, and, and, and I, I'm excited about that, and we've had a great time with it. Uh, but uh, I've been to several other nations. Uh, the first time I went to the Philippines, I went to the country of Dabao, uh, city of Dabao. And uh, when I got there, uh, the missionary, Brother Kogan, picked me up. And uh, he immediately started apologizing because uh, the, the, the man that had invited me and, and wanted me to come and was responsible for me being there couldn't meet me at the airport. And he began to explain how that he was the district superintendent of the, of the island, but, but his wife had been in a terrible accident and uh, was in the hospital in intensive care and that he just, he was sorry. He would see me at the conference, but he just couldn't make the airport and so you know I, I i had no idea no protocol because i'd never been to the philippines so it didn't offend me i just man, uh, let, you know take me to the hospital let's go pray he said we'll go by there on the way to church I said okay and so uh long story short uh this little lady was out shopping for the conference to feed all the preachers and people and she was on one of those little three-wheeled wooden carts built on the back of a Honda 100 motorcycle. I'm not making that up. That's how they roll. And, uh, and, and the biggest uh, machine on the island, they call them trash haulers, they, these huge trash trucks, kind of like you see here in our country, lost their air brakes, ran through a, a traffic stop, and broadsided that little jeepney that they call them and knocked her 500 feet through the air into a ditch uh, she had swelling on her brain, her lungs were collapsed, her ribs were broken, and she was laying in what they call intensive care. Now, if you, you don't understand uh, any concept of intensive care for those poor people over there, because intensive care just means you get a room with just two people in it, and you can have one family member sitting at the foot of your bed to get you some water or whatever. That's intensive care. And uh, I walked into that room, and Brother Don Colos went to one side, Brother Kogan to the other, and uh, I just reached over and laid my hand on this little lady's feet, she's laying there in a coma, uh, just, you know, all broke up, and I prayed for her, and I'll be honest with you, when I prayed for her, I felt nothing, nada, no spiritual unction, no flow, no, I just spoke a word of faith, Lord, we need you to raise her up in the name of Jesus, and me and Brother Kogan walked out and left Brother Kolos with his wife, and as we were walking down this long white corridor, the hallway that brought us in there, we got about halfway back to the car, and the Holy Ghost smote me. And I grabbed Brother Kogan, and I said, Quick, go back and tell Brother Don Colos that God said his wife will come out of this with no surgeries, 100% recovered. Did I mention I felt nothing? I'm preaching to somebody. Now, I love the testimony. It's like a fire down in my heart. And there's those moments, come on, when the, like the last time I was here and the Holy Ghost fell on all of us. But there's other moments when you just got to know God is faithful, He's with me, and what... So the next morning, uh, we got to the conference and I got to looking around for Brother Colos and he wasn't there. And so I asked about him. And they said, well, he, he's at his at the hospital with his wife, said, a little embarrassed, said, she's not better, she's worse. I said, oh, okay. So I got up and started preaching. He came in during the middle of my preaching. When I got through preaching, I went down and I grabbed Brother Don Colos. I said, Brother Don Colos, you need to leave right now and go. Your wife is waiting for you. Now, he had no idea if waiting for him meant that, you know, some big doctor event, some whatever. I, I just told him, go, your wife's waiting on you. That's all God told me. So he jumps in his car. He drives down there. He left her in a coma two hours earlier. Punctured lung, swollen brain. When he drove up to the hospital parking lot, 
Not only was she waiting for him, but she was pacing in the parking lot wondering why he wasn't there to pick her up. <laughs> Evidently, she got up right after he left. <laughs> What are you saying? I'm saying God works in other countries. God works in other venues. God works in nursing homes and hospitals and ridiculous. For the promise. Uh, I had a grandmother. She was, uh, she was the first woman to get the Holy Ghost in the county that we lived in. And uh, she lived for God and tried to raise her family, but none of them really followed into the church much. Uh, my mom got the Holy Ghost early, but back stood when she married my dad. And so, they, you know, she, she laid in that hospital bed frustrated, lost children. And so when she was laying in that bed, Brother Star. As a little boy, I would walk by her room and I would look in and there's this little old frail lady laying in her deathbed. She had cancer. She was dying of cancer. It took two years for her to finally go. But, but, but I would see her mouth moving, but her voice was so soft and frail you couldn't tell what she was saying. And so, you know, being a precocious little five-year-old, I wanted to know what Grandma was saying. So I got me a chair and pushed it up next to her bed when there wasn't nobody else in there. And I got up in that chair and... Got my knees up on that rail and I leaned out over and stuck my ear to her lips. And this is what I heard. God, save my children. Don't let my grandchildren be lost. Two years, she laid there praying that prayer over and over and over. Whew. Can I tell you of this morning's typing when I typed this up last night about midnight, whatever it was. I can report to you that I prayed three of her children through to the Holy Ghost in their 60s. A dozen of her grandchildren got the Holy Ghost in one revival that I preached. She now has great-grandchildren by the dozens full of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and I'm glad to report she now has two great, great, great grandchildren, tongue-talking Pentecostal. I know he had praying parents. <laughs> I know he knows what I'm talking about, but here's what I came to tell you. If that little old grandma praying that little simple mantra prayer could save that kind of progeny, listen in to what I got to tell you now. Jesus said to Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith would not fail after you are converted. But wait, Peter, I did not pray for you only. But I prayed for all of those that will believe at thy words. Did anybody believe Acts 2.38 when I read it today? That puts you, come on, in the hall of faith. Jesus prayed for you. You own it. Stand with me, I'm done. We're doing good. Doing good. We're doing good. I want to close with this. On this All Nation Sunday, come on, we're focusing about a God who can work anywhere, anytime for everybody. I want to bring to you from the book of God, Ephesians chapter 5. How many of you woke up this morning intent to do the will of God? How many of you live your life day by day, day by day? God, I just want to do your will. God, show me your way. God, I, I, I'm fixing to help you. Wherefore, he saith in verse 17, Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I want everybody to say this out loud. I can know and do the will of God. Be not drunk with wine. Everybody say, we got that one. 
<laughs> but filled with the Spirit. That is the will of I, I, I don't know, brother, but, but I have this little prayer that I've been teaching y'all, and you do call me your evangelist, so I feel pretty confident that maybe y'all might recognize it by now, but can I tell you that I don't just repeat that prayer because it sounds good and I got it memorized. Right. It's because it works. Right. When you repent of all of your sins, Jesus said that he is just when you confess your sins, I am just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all of Why? Why would you not pray that prayer? Now, let's talk about being filled with the Spirit. The Bible. I hate to be so theocratic. But it's all I got. I'm going to ride with what got me here, okay? The Bible says they knew they received the Holy Ghost because they heard them speaking in tongues. They spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost. They spoke in tongues. and The Jews spoke in tongues. The Cretes spoke in tongues. The Phrygians spoke in tongues. Oh, somebody help me now. Yeah. So you know you're full of the Holy Ghost. When you speak in tongues. And you know the will of God is to be filled. So maybe, just maybe, you might want to get down here today and say, Jesus, I ain't leaving till I'm talking in tongues. I mean, I don't want to be pushy or unkind. But if you can't do it in this atmosphere, it ain't going to get easier. I mean, today, it's like going through the drive through at the donut shop. I'll take a dozen. Oh, oh they're just coming out of the fire. Man, give me two. I got friends. I'm going to share. Listen to me. We're going to break bread. Nobody says it's got to be sourdough or pumpernickel. It can be sweet bread, donuts. Come on, bear claws. Somebody get a clue already. But I will tell you this, that whatever it is, you can believe this and take it to the bank. Oh, taste and see. For the Lord, He is good. I want you to say this out loud. The will of God, be full of the Spirit. It's probably going to taste good. Why wait? Why don't you just join me right down here? We'll all talk in tongues together. Come on, it tastes better when we're all taking some. Come on, don't leave anybody out. There's no reason for one human being not to come down here right now. Just, I'm just telling you, if you need to sit down, come sit on the altar. Don't stop in the aisle. Don't stop in the aisle. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. He's coming after you and me. Woo! In the name of Jesus, 
Lord, we repent of all of our sins. Calling on the name of the Lord, we invite you now by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire fall again. Let the power of your spirit fill us again. In the name of Jesus. Receive. Ribasata. Receive. Riba Kondela Bahaye. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Come on, get in the will of God. Be filled. Be filled. Every person, every tongue. Let your Holy Spirit 